Welcome to the St. Benedict's Episcopal School Podcast. Planting seeds, cultivating critical thinking, creativity, community, and lifelong learning. Here we'll take you on a transformative journey into the inner workings of this unique school and the people behind it. So sit up straight, school's in. And here's your host and head of school, Father Brian Sullivan. Hello and welcome to another inspiring episode of Planting Seeds Podcast. Today, I'm absolutely thrilled to introduce our special guest, Miles Russell. Miles is an exceptional young scholar and a recent 2022 graduate of St. Benedict's Episcopal School. During his time at St. Benedict's, Miles shined academically with his exemplary performance and discovered his passion for soccer. This sport has become an integral part of his life. His dedication to academics and athletics has made him a brilliant student athlete. After graduating from St. Benedict's, Miles continued to pursue his love for sports and is now making waves in the basketball scene as well, representing Campbell High School. Even amidst his busy schedule, he remains committed to his education and is currently enrolled in the esteemed International Baccalaureate Program at Campbell High School. Miles' talent on the soccer field has been recognized with the Offensive Award for JV, and he has also earned his place on the varsity cross country team and varsity soccer team, contributing to their journey to the playoffs at Campbell High. Beyond his academic and athletic achievements, Miles' sense of community and loyalty are truly commendable. He is part of his school's youth mentoring program, actively working with the local summer camp way to play and helping youth as much as he can around his community. He has been a lifelong member of St. Benedict's community and continues to be involved even after graduating. I can't wait to delve deeper into Miles' journey, experiences, and future aspirations. So without further ado, I'll warmly welcome Miles Russell to the Planting Seeds podcast. Well, welcome, Miles. Hello, hello. I hope your uh, last day of summer is going well. You start tomorrow, right? I sure do. Sophomore year. <laughs> Being on the Planting Seeds podcast is a, is a huge pleasure. And I would say it's been a while, but uh, we actually see each other pretty often as you are mm-hmm. still friends with my son, who's an alumni at St. Benedict's. Yeah. What grade uh, did you enroll at St. Pete's? Uh, I enrolled in St. Benedict's when I was in kindergarten. Oh, my gosh. Uh, way back, way back then. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen a lot of change. A lot uh, of change. So looking back on all that time, how do you think your experiences shaped you into the person you are today? The teachers that I had at St. Benedict's like really molded me into the hard worker that I am now. I had lots of help whenever I needed it at St. Benedict's. I had ADHD and all the teachers were so nice and, and took time to help me become better. That was really special to me and that really shaped me of how I am today. Any shout outs that I can uh, give to to them if they're listening? Oh man, any shout outs, see if I remember. Um, <laughs> Ms. Valentine, of course, she was, she was fantastic. Mr. Ash, when I was in eighth grade, great math teacher. And there's two names that come to mind right now. Awesome, yeah, good teachers still here, still plugging away. Uh, What are some of your fondest memories when you were here? I remember in third and fourth grade going to a music class and sitting on the floor and playing with the with the sticks on the on the on the drums. That was that was pretty cool. All the May days that St. B's had and going out with all my friends on the big slides and everything. That was pretty awesome. In fifth grade, Miss McFall had this. We were making ovens outside and we roasted the marshmallows all together outside on on like the last days of school. That was pretty cool. So STEM project, threw one in there for Ms. McFall, way to go. Mm -hmm. So we, of course, at St. Benedict's pride ourselves in creating young scholars who are confident leaders in the world. How would you say that we prepared you to lead? Fantastically, I just did a great job. I'm working at Way to Play, like I'm one of the main coaches for like sixth and seventh graders pretty much every day. And that leadership that I gained from St. Benedict's really helps me become like a leader and someone for the for all the kids to look up to, which is really special. Awesome. So now that you're enrolled um, at Campbell High School's Inter Baccalaureate program, and you came from St. Benedict's, a, a small class to a, a rather large school, what was that transition like? And how do you think St. Benedict's helped you prepare for it? Well, most of the St. Benedict's kids went to the Campbell IB uh, program, which was really special. So I knew a lot of people coming in, but the class changes were were a big switch for me. 
But as I had time to settle, it was fine. And the class lengths of it being from like 45 minutes to an hour 30, it really made me focus more on the subject matter that we were going over in classes. But um, the switch wasn't too bad for me. I would say it was it was all right. I've heard that um, it's easy to make friends because you had so many people that you had to see every day here that having a, a larger pool to choose from, it was a lot easier to, to meet people, um, which I think some people are concerned about. Is that true for you too? That is true. You had to surround yourself with the right people. And then once you have that, you'll be perfect. You'll be yeah, fine. And academics, easier, harder, about the same? I would say it was a little bit harder than St. B's, but St. B's gave me a great platform to expect what I was going to learn in IB. But the IB program is a lot quicker, but the material was easier to grasp because of uh, St. B's learning curriculum. Awesome. Well, shifting gears a little bit to uh, the other side of your extracurriculars, or as we like to call them, co-curriculars. Um, Mm -hmm. Excelling at soccer and basketball, I always knew you were a good soccer player. I didn't realize how far you have gone. Um, do you find that challenging now that you're in the uh, IB program? Sometimes it was challenging having practices, come home, going to go do something else, and then having to sit down and do homework. That was a little challenging. But I was able to, to handle having playing four games a week on JV and varsity for soccer and then taking a test the next day. That was, that was able to handle that over time. But at first it was, it was a little more difficult, but with the help of my parents and the people around me, I was able to quickly be all right with that. Cool. And you won an award, the offensive award in JV. So you played, you got that award and you stayed on JV and you continued to play varsity. You earned that spot. Yeah. So when tryouts happened, I, I had a search find place on a JV. And then the varsity coach asked me to be a swing player. So I would play up to four games a week. And I scored two goals on varsity with the playing time I had against like all the juniors and seniors. So I was really special learning from them. Awesome. And you want to share with our listeners a little bit about how your coaches and teammates influenced your growth as an athlete and as an individual? Absolutely. My coaches and teammates, I, I made one of my best friends this year. His name is Alessio. Uh, I met him through soccer and he and me and him just bonded ever since and he he's been a great help for me to become a better person and a better soccer player. All my coaches, Coach Connolly at Campbell really shaped me to be a better player all around and the teammates and coaches that I have always want for me to be a better person and I have the aspirations to go D1 in soccer and with the people that I'm surrounded with, I, I think I really can do that. Awesome. I guess being um, a part of a team, we all hear how teamwork is important in sports. How do you think that lesson of being on a team has extended into beyond the field and into your into your life, either academics or just socially? Academically, when there's always group projects, now I'm always the first one to talk to people is to get the group acclimated so we get work done. So I think sports and me talking talking to more and more people has made that easier and also socially i i now can make a lot more friends now that i know what i know and it's a lot easier but at saint benedict's we always include the community and how we reach out to the community well, you're involved with some outreach projects right now how is that important to you and and what you do and how it affects other people around you well i'm big into like educating the youth and making them like because they're our future so I'm, I like to help as much as I can being an ambassador for Campbell. I was at the ninth grade introduction and I was talking to some of the freshmen, taking them on, on, on tour. So that was pretty special. And then me just being a way to play every day was very amazing too. I bet they uh, looked up to you in more ways than one. You've grown a few inches since you left St. Pete's. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> so looking ahead, it's hard to believe uh, that one day you will graduate from high school. You mentioned the D1 uh, as part of your aspirations for your athletic achievements. What kind of academic achievements do you have in in the future? Academically, if soccer is something that is not an option anymore, I have a fallback plan of being a teacher. That's what I want to be. I want to teach as many people as I can about how to be a better person in like everyday life. Also, I want to be like in uh, sports medicine. That would be that would be pretty great for me. 
I like to tell people about my like old injuries and tell them how they can fix themselves and be better. So they don't have to have the same things. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I think with all the achievements that you have had both academically and athletically mentioning something like injuries, uh, are there any other particular obstacles you've faced and had to overcome and how it helped shape your character and resilience? Uh, yeah, I think when I was six or seven, I had my first concussion and that was, that was a pretty big thing for me. But the teachers at St. Benedict's were always there to help me a little bit more after that injury. And I've had two other concussions besides that, which is pretty crazy being 15 and had three concussions, but adapting from those injuries has made me like think more about what I'm going to do next so I can be more cautious in whatever I may do. I remember when your dad uh, came back from, from his injuries and you running and getting involved more with running. I'm wondering how your family has been a big part because usually when there's somebody successful like yourself, uh, there's a support system and knowing what your dad went through and working with your mom on a regular basis with our school here, uh, she helps with the diversity, equity and inclusion group here at St. Benedict's. Um, what other ways has your family been there to support you and help you pursue your athletics and academics? They have really just been amazing getting the very long and tedious schedule I have and all of my, uh, all of my athletics, them coming out to all my games, supporting me as much as they can. My dad always being there to give me rides whenever he can. It's been just a fantastic help. And my mom's so, like screaming my name from the sidelines. <laughs> I remember back and playing for Upward, this uh, flag football, to be the loudest one screaming my name. So that's been a great, great help for me. Yeah, I think that's one of the things at St. Benedict's. We get to know all of our kids and their families pretty well. Uh, and your family's yeah. been a big big part of St. Benedict's. So as you continue on uh, with your endeavors and uh, you look back where you were, what kind of advice would you give to our current students and maybe even future students who are listening to this who may enroll as a as part of hearing your successes? I say don't take the time that you have at St. Benedict's for granted because St. Benedict's is a truly beautiful place. You'll make lifelong friends. I still have friends from kindergarten that I still know now. And that that's just tremendously special because those are people you like, you know, for the rest of your lives. And um, to always be on top of your academics, try not to fall back in anything because you have teachers and people around you that will definitely help you whenever you ask. So just being there, just being able to ask people for help because that's, that's very important and uh, making the right friendships. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in uh, to this inspiring episode of planting seeds podcast we've had the privilege of hearing from this exceptional student athlete and saint benedict's graduate miles russell miles it's been an honor to have you as a guest and i look forward to seeing you excel on and off the field and uh, maybe in the background at my son playing video games with you um, i can't wait to see what the future has in store for you and until next time Keep spreading kindness, compassion, and love. Absolutely. Thank you, Father Brian. Thanks for listening to Planting Seeds, cultivating critical thinking, creativity, community, and lifelong learning with your host, Father Brian Sullivan. To find out more about St. Benedict's Episcopal School, visit stbs.org.